If you're familiar with my channel, you're familiar with the fact that seven months ago I created the video Why I Don't Support the Troops. Now, obviously, despite the thorough and clear explanation as to why I do not, there is a lot of right-wing, ultra-patriot hate comments on there, some of which are just downright hilarious. I've decided to take some of the better ones and respond to them. So, here we go. Are you some kind of moron? You need to live over there, but not in America. Get out now. Always my favorite content. Love it or leave it, which is so hilarious because it should be really obvious by now, I'm not even in it. I mean, I said that right in the video that I'm not an American. I don't support my own country's troops and obviously I don't support the US troops. But for some reason, he's still gotta say, get out of America, even though I'm not actually in it. I mean, this is pretty much proof that the guy didn't really watch the video. He just saw the title, Why I Don't Support the Troops, and threw out his ultra-patriot line of, if you don't agree with what the government's telling them to do, then therefore you hate your country and support the Taliban and fundamentalist Islam idiocy. Man, actually watch the video next time. You, sir, are a horrible person. You can support the troops, but not their mission. Supporting them means hoping they come back alive and they stay safe. Just know that because of our soldiers, you are allowed to say the things you say. Think about that for a moment. Bullshit. I'm a horrible person because I don't agree with, well, what's quite frankly a genocide. You, you, you absolutely do not see the fallacy in saying, I don't support what they're doing, but I support them. Well, what would you have done to the SS? I don't support the Holocaust, but I support the troops doing it because I need to be a patriot. That's, that's ridiculous. Saying that you don't support what they're doing, but you support them is a complete logical fallacy. That doesn't, that doesn't even make any sense at all. Why the hell would I support someone who's doing something so reprehensible as say, killing three million people in Iraq and Afghanistan. I mean, this isn't like a family member that decided to become a stripper or go into pornography or something. I don't agree with what they're doing, but I still love my kid. There's a big fucking world of difference if you can't understand that. You can't stay in there and say, I support the people doing it, but I don't support what they're doing. But then you are supporting what they're doing because you're giving them support for doing it. It's a complete logical fallacy. I feel sorry for you. Thanks to our soldiers, I have the freedom to say what I want to say. Bullshit. No. As I already explained in the video, the soldiers do not support my freedom of speech. Mainly because they're backed up by people like you who are a massive threat to it. You seem to not understand that the military is the government. You know, that big overblown government that's too much of it, that's crazy, and it's, it's going to kill everybody and take away our rights. They're the most powerful force in the government. They are the government's freaking hitmen, the government's iron fist. And you're going to stand there and say they're great. It's the most fascist part of any government in any country anywhere under any ideology. What don't you understand about that? The soldiers do not support my freedom of speech. That's like saying the government supports my freedom of speech. Absolutely does not. Every time because of something I said here on YouTube, expressing my own opinion, well within the law, not breaking any kind of rules, the government called me a terrorist. Why? Because I disagreed with the government. I disagreed with a corporate policy. Therefore, I am a terrorist. There was a direct, real threat to my freedom of speech. Where were my country's soldiers? Where were your country's soldiers? Well, I'll tell you where they were. They were off killing people in Afghanistan that I never met, who never met me, and don't even know my name. So where were they defending my freedom of speech? Nowhere to be found, because that is not what they do. That is not the role of the military. Nobody in this fucking world supports my freedom of speech but me. No one but me defends it. 
Maoist, I support your decision to speak freely because you have every right to speak your mind. The troops don't fight for me, quote, was my favor. Instead of troops fighting for you, what should be done is have the Taliban come to your home and torture you, allow the enemy to come here and destroy the lawmakers who give you freedom, etc. We laid down our lives so you can sit here and bitch. It's easy to enjoy and appreciate freedom when you are thousands of miles from the war zone. I should go over there or they should come over here and do a bunch of stuff that they didn't do to me. That is the worst most blatant straw man argument the right wing ever comes up with. How about this? How about the Canadian army come into your country, shoot everybody that disagrees with the foreign policy of Canada? Now, my soldiers are heroes because they stopped the United States, which is an actual imperialist power that really does go around killing people that don't agree with it, you know, because you're one of them. So there you go. My soldiers are heroes. No. It's a ridiculous straw man argument. The Taliban never presented any threat to me whatsoever. I mean, I really don't remember their statement on their website saying, hey, you know that guy, the Maoist rebel? Let's get that guy. No. They were a government. A virtually non-existent military power. They didn't even have the ability to attack their neighbor. That's a complete, that's another complete logical fallacy. Why is it that the biggest, strongest, most powerful country in the world is always acting like it's the victim? That's absolutely untrue. Laying down your lives, excuse me, US Army, who once again obviously didn't watch the damn video and saw the part where I said, I am not an American. You did not lay your lives down for me. Now get it through your head. You, at one time, laid down your lives to try to stop my freedoms. I don't know how many times i got to bring up the subject of the War of 1812, where the United States made five attempts to invade Canada, and we beat your ass every time, and then we burned down the White House. Nobody, I never asked a damn person in the world to ever lay down their life for me. I would do it for the people. I would not do it for the government as the military actually does. I don't know how many times I have to explain this. I wouldn't want you to lay down your life for me because if you did, it would mean I did something wrong. Nobody, nobody does that for me. I would only be willing to accept that from another comrade because honestly, and I can say this with all purity in my heart, I would rather die than ever owe a piece of garbage like you anything. I would rather die than ever owe my life to an imperialist warmonger like you. I've said it before in that video, I've said it again here multiple times. No one defends my freedom. The military does not defend freedom. I don't have the freedom of speech today because of the army. I have freedom of speech today because people, regular everyday people, stood up to the government and fought in their own armies, their own police forces to have that. I do not owe my freedom of speech to the military. I owe my freedom of speech to everyday regular people like me who stood up and demanded it. If anything, the military and the police force for their histories owe us an apology for repressing our rights, our own armies, our own police forces, for repressing their own civilians. Get that through your head.